Business in Africa is big business, but it comes with a number of challenges at an operational level as well. We take a look at these challenges and ways that entrepreneurs have been able to circumvent them. In studio, we're joined by Yaron Asabi. He's the CEO of the Digital Solutions Group. Thanks so much, Yaron, for joining us Thank you for having uh, this me. afternoon. Well, uh, looking at uh, you know doing business in Africa, we've often heard uh, the phrase the great Africa business migration being used. I mean, to what extent is Africa's potential really being a real Realized, uh, you know, and is there in fact a changing perception when it comes to doing business on the continent? Most certainly. I mean, we're seeing a lot of investment from foreign companies in Africa. Um, I think the inter African trade is not as high as it should be, but there's certainly a, a lot of warmth to South African companies working in Africa. We, we have offices in Kenya and in Nigeria and we've done uh, work all over the continent and it's been a, a positive experience but uh, challenging. Uh, a lot of challenges in terms of skills, shortage of skills, talent, uh, the ability to trade very easily, it's mm -hmm. very heavily regulated environment from a banking perspective. So in order to convert your currency, you need to apply to often to the central bank to of be able to do that. Of course, we can't talk about Africa as this homogenous entity. So sure. let's break it down here because we're dealing with a myriad of operating environments, each presenting its own set of opportunities and challenges as well. Just how complex an investment picture are we looking at from someone who does business on the continent? Well, as you rightfully said, you know, the, uh, the, c the continent is very different and very diverse and it comes with its own challenges. Um, doing business in Malawi, for example, they've got a huge currency issue. So unless they do a tobacco auction and they get uh, some, some investment back in terms of foreign currency, it's very difficult to get your money out. So you've got you to actually assess the risk up front. And, and with one of our projects, we had to um, wait uh, twice a year, we'd get paid, or, or once a year, which is uh, a, a different way of actually structuring your deal. Um, I think uh, East Africa is very vibrant, uh, a lot easier to do business than sometimes West Africa, which is, tends to be a lot more heavily regulated. We do business in both Ghana and Nigeria. Um, but uh, overall, there's big promise for Africa, over a billion consumers in the next couple of years, emerging middle class. Uh, certainly, companies like MTN have done phenomenally well and have, have created really amazing opportunities mm -hmm. and amazing wealth in the region. Uh, I think one of the criticisms, when, and again, we talk about this homogenous, this is Africa and this is, it's difficult to do business with Africa. Uh, you know, I think one of the comments that we saw quite a lot of last year was that you know, South Africa has actually become quite Arrogant is maybe not quite the right word, but we are quite arrogant in terms of our position on the continent. We, we're very lucky in that we've become, we, we have first, a lot of first world infrastructure in a lot of cases, but we've almost become, if we're going to go into Africa, we do it as do it the South African way. And I think that one of the interesting things, us, us, us sat with one of the um, Nigerian listed companies, and they, they, they'll go and they'll, they'll have an, an annual, where they do the annual financial statements. and. You know, with, where we have 20 analysts in a room, they have 2,000 shareholders on a football field or in a church, and you know, it's very, very different culturally. There's a far, you know, there's quite an engaged audience out there, as so long as you can work out how to engage them. I agree 100%, and that's why I approach and expanding into Africa is always get a local partner. Mm -hmm. The local partner understands the local market, and what works in one market doesn't necessarily work in another. Uh, because of the monetary issues and the ability to apply to central bank. Also, we have BEE in South Africa, and in Africa there's an unspoken BEE. Mm -hmm. I think that African businesses, if you're in Kenya, Kenyans like to do business with Kenyans. So it makes it a lot easier if you have a local partner that kind of educates you and onboards you on the culture and how to do business in that particular country, because they're all very, very different. But how do you find that businesses. local partner? I mean, I think that's one of the issues. That's and, and you can You can say whether it's discovery going into China or what um, one of the financial services going to India. I mean, it's very difficult to identify a local partner. Our, our experience has been that uh, we often won business first from, from South Africa. Mm -hmm. We then would look for local skills. We would do a few projects with a local partner just to test the relationship and the chemistry and make sure that there's a good fit mm. and then convert it into a JV. So start with an arm's length relationship, yep. uh, get a working relationship. Uh, going and, and see that it all works well and that they can actually facilitate the skills because a lot of the time the biggest issue in IT is being able to find the right local skills so we often do training in South Africa or 
do what's called a design, build, operate, transfer, which means that you actually design the solution, you build it, you operate it, hold the hand of the particular mm. client with your local partner, and then transfer the skills locally to be able to maintain it and support it, because it makes more sense. What's your assessment of the skills pool that you have access to? on the continent? Well, it, it, it's actually changing very quickly, which is very positive. I think with the advent of the internet um, and with uh, uh, excitement about ICT in general uh, in, 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 in Africa, we're seeing some really great talent. They may not have as much experience, so being work, uh, we've worked all over the world and especially in the South African market, we generally uh, have more experience in South Africa than in some other areas in the continent, but there's, there's no lack of skills. It's just a matter of actually doing the skill transfer and the education. How tough is that fight for the skills pool that you have access to with specifically <laughs> a competition rising very rapidly within that IT space? Absolutely. So there's, there's to, to retain the talent is, is a big issue. So once, once you get the skill uh, to retain them and also so uh, everybody wants the same pool of talent and there's a very short uh, What's that doing to pool. the cost of doing business? It's, it's a lot higher and, and, and as a continent that should be uh, positioning itself like India or, or China, uh, if we look at the other BRICS countries where we should have low cost skills available in the, in the region, I see a lot of outsourcing still happening to Chinese companies and Indian companies specifically because the costs are so high and because of this talent uh, I think one of the anecdotal issue. interesting things, if you go and actually look at the Harvard MBAs for the alumni, you'll actually find that Harvard's actually, in Nigeria has actually got one of the highest, excluding the BRICS mm -hmm. and obviously Europe, has got one of the highest levels of alumni in the last couple of years. So I mean I do think that the skills are starting to go, and, and, and importantly in Nigeria's case, they're coming back into the country themselves. You know, they're coming back to Nigeria. They're not just being educated in the U.S. and staying in the U.S. They're coming back and they're doing business locally. I agree with Mark. There's yeah. a there's a big homecoming revolution. Everybody understands there's a big opportunity in Africa. So they might be studying in the U.K. and the U.S., but they come back to to Africa because they think kind of attached to the continent. It's a wonderful continent, and and they come with great skills. And that's and that's what's really raising the levels of of entrepreneurship. And I think to grow the economy, we need more entrepreneurs because those are the, the small businesses and big businesses that create the jobs and, and we have a huge unemployment issue in Africa throughout the continent. One of the things which does look quite interesting is you know this competition of South Africa versus Kenya at the moment. I think that we, we South Africa has become quite lazy and has started missing out on opportunities where a lot of the multinationals are actually using Kenya as their landing point. Maybe just some quick comment on where is it actually easy to do business? I mean, we always presume that it's difficult, but Kenya, I think, has made a lot of strides. I believe Ghana has made quite a lot of strides. I mean, where do you find it easy to do business in Africa? If you consider Mauritius part of Africa, yep. Mauritius is probably the most geared uh, from a financial hub perspective. I think they are the most mature in the way they look at it, and they actually try and attract foreign direct investment. And our holding company that, that owns all the companies in Africa is actually based in Mauritius. But uh, Kenya has made a lot of strides. I mean, companies like Barty Airtel set up head office there because uh, 16 opcos, it's much easier to manage it from, from East Africa. And they've selected it over South Africa, which mm. is interesting. Uh, but um, I, think, I think all of them have different challenges. Uh, you know, from, from our experience of working in Africa over 10 years now, um, you know, you, you Finding the right local partner, as I said earlier, is the key, but also having the right relationships with government and understanding the local yeah. uh, way of doing business and gearing yourself to changing the way you engage with customers and the yeah. way you engage with local business to be able to meet all the local regulatory environments. So, you know, when you're doing business in Nigeria, understand that the time to get the payment out will take a lot longer. If you're doing business in Malawi, you know, you've got to be patient. 